Hello guys, welcome to SIPCODE and today we are looking at another cup of code. So today we want to um, look at how to secure our Spring Boot microservices using uh, API keys and how we can leverage um, the Spring Boot microservices architecture to secure all our microservices or if you want to have microservices that interact um, with each other just using API keys instead of your basic auth and JWTs or other um, um, security um, authentication uh, mechanisms. So um, today we just want to showcase how you can get this achieved. Uh, if you look at this API, for example, right here, um, the auth that we're using is um, API key or, uh, authentication mechanism. And basically what we put in um, that authentication is just a key and we have a value so it's sort of a key value pair and this comes in as the header of your um, HTTP request into your microservice and then you're able to validate and authenticate um, uh, that particular request using the key so if you uh, take a look here we have uh, we get a response here to welcome to zip code microservice and if uh, anything changes in this key or in the value uh, we are able to invalidate that token uh, right there so uh, you can see that essentially what you want to have even if the key changes it's something that the system or the microservice does know of so that will be an invalid um, and that will be an invalid request so you wouldn't have access to uh, to the microservice um, or to the API. So let's get right into the code and uh, see how we can achieve such a um, level of security in our microservices architecture. So first things first, as always in this um, coding house, we always start with the Spring Initializer. So the first thing that we want to do is get all our project metadata in in check and that is what that will be the project dependencies so the first things first is maven we need to uh, get our project as a maven project so that we have our pom file to solve and resolve all our dependencies right there so the language is java the spring boot uh, we always uh, go for the latest stable so the stable ones it's the ones without the snapshot so we always go for that and the group artifact is essentially com.zip code and the artifact is secure API. This is a demo project for Spring Boot and uh, that's basically the package name. And we can package it as a jar as a word that is still fine and we have the latest um, stable uh, or long-term um, support version of Java which is 17 which uh, is looking good and then we move to the dependencies that we'll need we're not going to use <clears throat> a lot here straight to the point have Lombok um, to scaffold some of the stuff even though we're not going to use it much in this project uh, we do have spring web because we'll be uh, scaffolding a rest controller uh, that will be hitting as the API um, right here which will look like this and then we have spring security which is what we'll use to basically um, protect or secure our microservice so we don't really need much but in a real world application you would need things like your uh, um, uh, spring data jpa which would be um, your introduction to database and any database um, dependency that you would need uh, sql server postgres uh, whatever database that you need uh, you would basically need to add those dependencies according to your requirements right there. So this one is straightforward. We just want to show you how to secure your application using a API key. Um, and if you want to see how you can interact with the database um, and uh, get all of those details, we do have other um, tutorials in the in this channel so you can go through those as well or go to the channel you will see a lot of different examples um, in the channel uh, with other features as well in Spring Boot so uh, with that being said let's move right into the code so uh, we just want to make this quick and easy so once we have our project right here we just um, generate that project I'll share uh, this link also uh, in the description down below so please do check that out so that you will have the same config as we have and you can follow along with this project 
So um, if we go to the code base, uh, first things first, we will have our Spring Secure um, base project, which will go to our main class. In the main class, we simply want to do one specific thing. We want to exclude the um, security auto configuration, uh, this class, and use a detail service auto configuration. So we don't want Spring Boot to auto configure uh, the security for us where you have default um, login um, required or uh, Spring suggesting the default uh, username and uh, credentials that it will scaffold for you. We want to block that from happening, so we need to in, uh, basically include this part in the main class. So we want to have that as part of the main class so that um, we can use our custom uh, security config and filter uh, and filter chain uh, in that sense. So that's first things first. So once that is set up, the next thing that we want to do is start by the security config. Um, do you want to start in the security config? Yeah, let's start by security config. So in the security config, so what we have is we have it, it is a, a configuration, so we'll annotate it with a configuration, and we want to enable web security uh, just like that. And we want to create a security filter chain, which is a bean, and that particular bean. Uh, essentially, uh, we'll take in an HTTP security and that uh, we want to essentially um, define which level of security that we want in our, um, in our uh, microservices or any request that we will create in this project, any REST endpoint that we'll have. This is what uh, the security should look like. So uh, cross-site uh, resource forgery, we just want to um, disable all of that. Uh, authorize HTTP requests, uh, we have an, uh, an authorization manager right here and that uh, registry, that registry essentially will check for every endpoint that we have and want to make sure that every request is authenticated. And if there is an exception, um, we will then exclude those to say uh, permit all or we want specific roles and things like that we can we can uh, handle that uh, over here so but for now I want to just show you that we'll secure this and we we secure every endpoint and we'll need that API, API key to access every endpoint within the uh, microservice so then the HTTP basic customizer with default so we just want to set everything to uh, default at this point and the session management it's a stateless because we are using REST APIs, so the uh, policy will be uh, stateless uh, just like it is here. So that looks good. And once that is set up, now what we want to do, which is the key part of this configuration, is add filter before. So we want to add an authentication filter, and this authentication filter is the one that checks our request for the um, the key that we expect and the value that we expect to have and you will see uh, you see this shortly and we want to add this authentication filter before this username password authentication filter class and that will basically kick in uh, to validate our um, our um, our users or if it's a system calling it with the, with that API key then we basically authenticate using this filter and uh, once all of this is set up, uh, we are then able to uh, build our HTTP uh, filter chain and uh, basically we are done. So let's go into our authentication filter and look at how this guy is looking. So uh, authentication filter is basically this class here in our security package, which is um, right here. And it extends uh, a generic filter bean so what we do in the uh, override of do filter, uh, because we've passed in all of the um, configs from our security filter chain B, and now we are handling the request. So the request will come in uh, as we uh, as we expect, and obviously it's coming from a filter chain, so that is fine. And we will basically do an authentication over over here. So. This entire class is just to handle this guy right here. So what we do in our authentication is we use an authentication service that will then map uh, or get the the HTTP the API key from the uh, HTTP 
request which you can see this is authentication service get authentication and we pass the request into our uh, authentication so this authentication service is this authentication service right here so if we go to this guy we go straight to this authentication service right here and this guy doesn't do anything except map our request so this is the request that we have um, which does the authentication it gets the request and it, it, and it says from the request get the header with the uh, the auth token header name which is the key that we want to give our our API uh, in the header so this could basically be defined let's say uh, you can basically say API key uh, internal or something like that it would just make sense for for your situation and then that um, header name would basically be uh, the key for your for that um, for that token that you'll be using and then uh, the token will basically be retrieved using that particular key from the from the request so that looks good and once we get the uh, API key uh, from the header of the request we're able to say if the key is null or the key is not equals to the token that we have which is this guy right here um, so these are now hard coded for the basis of uh, just going through this tutorial but essentially in the real world you wouldn't have these hard coded you would be retrieving them from um, your database and you would uh, in the database you'd have uh, more detail uh, when it comes to the key to say maybe you have a key for um, this particular system or this particular tenant and things like that so you do have more details uh, not just a token like we are doing it now but you will you will be able in this service class to then uh, map into the correct um, key store and retrieve your API key and make sure that these guys authenticated they're active they're not active and things like that so this is where you'd want to handle that business logic um, in this uh, service uh, implementation over here but for now we just make sure that it the key is there and we're able to uh, authenticate it's correct if it's not correct we throw this invalid API key as you saw uh, right here so if I map this, this, this guy up and I say send uh, it will just say invalid uh, API key so that's the response invalid API key and if I take this back and I just say send now I get to welcome to microservice. So we are do, we are handling all of that in here. But if everything uh, is fine and the API came back uh, without issues, what we then do is return a new authentication mapper. So in the authentication mapper, we want to because this is just a key, we want to have more details in the security context of our microservice in our session. We want to have more context about this user. So we need to map it into an authentication um, object. Uh, so what we need to do is then pass in the API key and pass in the authorities that we have. And we will see this now. This authentication mapper is the one that's sitting here. So let's go there and so let me just uh, finish this one. So we pass in the API key and the, uh, the authorities. In this instance, the there's no authorities there are no roles uh, for for this key but if you do have uh, roles and you would want to uh, um, assign to to this particular key or user or things like that you are able to then um, add those authorities uh, for this user and then map it into the authentication um, object that will then give it to the uh, the current context the security context uh, of this particular uh, logged in user or instant in this case. So if we go to the authentication mapper right here, we are able to see that this, the only thing that it does is essentially uh, extends the abstraction, um, uh, the abstract authentication token, and then it basically maps it into an authentication um, object for the current um, the current context so if now the user goes to 
uh, let me show you this in uh, uh, in here so in here as you can see it gets the authentication and once we get the authentication it sets the security context holder get context set authentication and it uh, passes that um, authentication object that has all the details that has to do with this current um, session uh, for this instance or for this user. Um, so once we have all of that, we're able then to across the application for this uh, current context, be able to retrieve the user as we need and uh, maybe get some details, get if the user is um, authorized to do um, certain activities or access certain endpoints or certain resources and things like that. So that is where uh, the detail will come from, from the security context. And all of this is wired through uh, the mapper and the mapper essentially comes back to uh, the authentication service. And then once we have that, we are able to um, authenticate um, the user or authenticate the, that particular endpoint that it's integrating with this one. It could be a system uh, uh, calling the API. And once everything goes through, we are able to hit endpoints and access um, and access the system as we need. So once all of this is done, now the one thing that is left is essentially the controller which is basically the endpoint. So we just have one REST controller over here, which is a uh, which has a request mapping of a root, which is basically a home controller, and it basically gives us welcome to zip code uh, microservice, and that's basically it. So any endpoint that we add will essentially be protected in the same way because our security. Uh, filter uh, chain is basically global so that allows us to have it across for every endpoint that we we create and we build in in this microservice so that was uh, one quick uh, um, example real world example to see how you can protect your uh, applications using api key and i hope this was helpful i do um, hope that you like and subscribe uh, into the channel, we do have a lot of Spring Boot, uh, Angular, um, front end um, examples, tutorials, and take you through. Um, we do offer code uh, reviews, uh, code debugging if uh, that's what you need and that's what you're looking for, or you need someone to go through your code. Uh, happy to assist in those situations. Uh, but yeah, if you stay till this long, I uh, really appreciate you and really appreciate your feedback, your like, your subscription. We'd really appreciate that. Until next time, cheers.